Well, hey there. We're here in our little outdoor studio at the cabin on Huckleberry Hill. Tuesday morning. Today is the first day in several that we've seen the sunshine breaking through. We had us a really rainy spell that lasted several days, six, seven inches of rain spread out over the, the past few days and there really wasn't a time to get out and do anything out here in our little outdoor kitchen if, if you want to call it that and so we're set up getting ready to do a cooking video bush pot mess kit type of cooking video and uh, here over the past couple of days in spite of the the rain and everything we had a couple of volunteers for the bush pot my son-in-law shot a squirrel, I got a squirrel. So we're gonna do something with those squirrels out here over the open fire in my in my homemade, well I didn't make the pot, but I modified it, bush pot that was made from a dog treat container, a stainless steel dog treat container that I added a bale to so that it would hang over the fire. Stay with me, and let's cook something good to eat. All right, this is my little bush pot. Is it the best one in the world? I, I don't make any claims to that. It works for me. And uh, one of the great things about it is that it holds almost a half a gallon of liquid. And was it not for where I drilled the holes where you could fill it all the way to the top, it would hold a half gallon. I'm gonna set that over here for just a second, get it out of the way. Ah, look at this. Two squirrels. Now, for them to fit best, both of them, I'm going to cook both of them. Uh, I could stuff them in the pot, but that's, that's going to be kind of hard to do. You could... You could do that with a knife, but I don't like to use my knife to cut through bone with. Anytime someone's ever asked to borrow my pocket knife, uh, I've always told them, don't you go cutting wire with it, because 
That'll ruin the edge. Two high quarters. I'm going to try to get that rib cage out of there. The great thing about a hatchet like this is if it's sharp, you can do a lot of work with it. Any kind of any kind of hatchet or axe. The rib cage of these things has a lot of little bones in them. Yeah, you know, I like what you can do with a with a small axe. Now you have the back straps, throw those in. Let's get this other guy taken care of. This is a this is a pretty good size squirrel. The thing about a squirrel is they they can tend to be pretty tough. I've tried to fry them. I've tried to put them on a stick over a fire. And by golly, you you got to have a good set of jaw muscles and a good set of teeth. So, it's always best to boil them. That right there has a, that, there's a piece of, piece of, of uh, shot. Anything like that, get it out of them. You can break a teeth on something like that, or break a tooth. And that's one of the last things you want to do, especially if you're out someplace and can't get to a dentist right away. Just clean this guy up here a little bit. You know, while we're talking about squirrels, a lot of people are, they're really squirrely about eating, eating stuff like this. Those rib cages and that old flank. Just throw it in the fire and let it, let it create some aroma. That's pleasant. Pleasant smell around the campfire. Let's get that back strap. Fine stuff right there, folks. We'll throw, throw that front end down in there. And now that we got it that far, yep, folks get squirrely about squirrel. Wild game. There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing at all. It's really tasty. It's a lean, a very lean meat. Let's put some seasoning in there. This is some salt and pepper that I have mixed up. That ought to be more than enough. Uh, that's too much. And then the thing that just really makes it kick, crushed red pepper. Put as much or as little as you like. I don't want it to be too hot. I like it to be tasty. I like to have that little bit of zing in there. And we'll cover that with water. Put the lid on it. We'll hang it over the fire. Now we'll just let it do its thing for a while. What we've got here now is the squirrel meat that after I cooked it until I could pull it, pick it apart, I let it, I took it out of the pot, I let it cool down and got all the bones out of it. I've got to tell you that one of the squirrels was so old 
that it didn't matter how long I cooked it in the in the bush pot. Didn't matter how long I simmered it, it would not tender up. It was tough as boot leather. It would have taken a pressure cooker to have made that squirrel tender enough to eat. But I, especially the back and hindquarters, I was able to get something off the front and 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 this area uh, that I put in here. And now what I'm going to do with this? I've already brought this pot back up to. I've got that water almost up to a boil, and the, the broth in there to stop. And now what I'm going to do, steaming hot, I'm going to add the pulled squirrel back to the pot. Now i got to tell you, that's mighty tasty. At this point, before you add the squirrel back, go ahead and test your stock. I already did. Make sure it's seasoned well enough. It's just fine the way I got it. I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of rice to that. I've not added any more water to the pot. Rice is generally a one part rice, two parts water thing. and uh, stir that around a little bit, put the lid on it, put that back over the fire, takes rice 14 minutes, and that's simmering rolling water to be done, so we're going to we're going to get that back up to the simmer. We're going to let it cook 14 minutes. And then we're going to give it a try. I've had a great morning out here sitting around the fire, feeding the fire, listening to the birds, studying the trees and stuff around us here. I noticed that the huckleberries are beginning to bud out. Looking off deep into the woods, I see a few red maples that are beginning to bud, and it's a beautiful time of the year here in Lower Alabama. We're getting ready to do some serious camping in the weeks ahead, and we're going to be doing some videos on about those adventures. Right now, we need to see what's going on inside this pot. I took it off the fire. And let it sit for a few minutes. Gives the rice time to finish absorbing as much liquid as they can. It smells good. Mmm. And by golly, it tastes real good. Folks, I appreciate you hanging around and watching. Look forward to doing more videos and having fun hanging out with you. I'll see you on the next one.